It's 109. We're doing this again. Ahoy Vashikni. As you know, on this channel, I like to look at the comparison between my old life in Los Angeles and my new life in Prague, Czechia. And so today I thought we'd focus on driving differences. So here are a few of the little quirks of driving in Prague that keep me on my toes and mostly make me want to take the train. First, before we get into totally confusing road signs and intersections with no road signs whatsoever, and check drivers, I have to thank this week's sponsor, NordVPN. Now, one thing about being an international woman of mystery like me is that I get to travel a lot in normal years. But I have developed a taste for international films and serials and streaming platforms that I can't necessarily find depending on the country I'm in. Now, when I first moved to the Czech Republic, um, lots of Czechs would just tell me, oh, just go ahead and pirate it, which I found to be so much more hassle than it's worth. Honestly, I don't want to spend time on sketchy websites clicking random links that never seem to work, possibly downloading viruses. I mean, this is 2021. Have we learned nothing? So for only a few euros a month, I just flip on my NordVPN and I have access to movies and TV serials from all over the planet. NordVPN is lightning fast. They have 5,500 servers in over 60 countries. And with one account, you can connect up to six devices simultaneously. You also get a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer service. All that when you use the link below and you use the code DREAMPROG at checkout. Now, I just found out that NordVPN is celebrating their ninth anniversary, much like I am in this country. Hooray! And they're giving away something special in celebration. Every purchase of a two-year plan will get one month for free and a special gift. The surprise gift will be months for free, anywhere from one to 12 months for free, given totally at random when you sign up. Go ahead and click the link below to take advantage of this awesome deal. When you sign up, you help me support this channel so I can keep bringing you more videos. Oh wait, shoop shoop. Okay, you can do it after the video. Okay, so the first driving difference is manual versus automatic. In the Czech Republic, cars are mostly manual, and in the United States, cars are mostly automatic. I was fortunate enough to have a manual transmission car as my first car in California, that we call it stick shift, and so I learned very early how to operate a stick shift. But the problem was, most of my friends didn't, so if there was a problem and I couldn't drive us home, they couldn't drive the car either. Now, in the Czech Republic, and most of Europe, most cars are stick shift. And so when you get your driver's license, you have to know how to drive a stick shift. I believe, I'm not sure, I think there's like an automatic only driver's license, but then you're only allowed to ever drive automatics. I'm not sure if that's correct, but in Europe, you have to know how to drive a manual transmission. Daytime running lights are mandatory in the Czech Republic. So that means you have to have lights on your, the front of your car all the time when you're driving. In California, um, you'd only put on daylights if there was fog out. And for me, it's just like a little annoyance that I have to like remember to turn it off and remember to turn it on. I think maybe some of the newer cars, they automatically go on, but I don't have one of the newer cars. I don't find that they give me any additional visibility. Maybe it helps oncoming cars see my, my car more easily, but there you go. In the Czech Republic, it's mandatory for you to have a first aid kit in your car at all times, and you also have to have a safety vest. I can't remember if it's yellow or orange, but a safety vest and those um, glow-in-the-dark triangles, and that's in case there's any accident, you are well-equipped to stop your car, pull off to the side, and be visible by um, drivers. There's no such requirement in California that you have any of those um, life-saving or, or safety devices. The blood alcohol limit in California is 0.08, and in the Czech Republic, it's 0.0. So no beer, no alcohol when you're driving. And I think this is really a lot better. So they say that like a woman of my size can have two drinks every hour and still maintain that blood alcohol level. But the problem is, as you are drinking, you're kind of like losing count, and you're, you, you get into this point where you're like, I'm fine. 
and you really end up driving over that level. Whereas if you're in the Czech Republic, you're just like, no, I can't drink, I'm driving. And they take it very seriously here. But I think that having like sort of this higher range limit for alcohol puts people in these situations where they can't really know what their blood alcohol level is. So Czech Republic, you have some alcohol, you can't drive. I made a video about the streets of Prague back in the day and I mentioned that um, there are some intersections where there's no controls, there's no stoplights, no stop signs, and my rationale or my reasoning was that everybody slowed down so they wouldn't like run into each other and that is what made the intersection safe and all of my commenters were like, you have a driver's license? And my husband was like, you have a driver's license? And I don't know why I just like brain farted on it, but the rule is at an uncontrolled intersection, which you won't find in California, but you will find in the Czech Republic, there's priority that you should know. So it's pedestrians and trams. Honestly, trams might come before pedestrians with the tram drivers I've seen. I have to double check that one. But then it's the person to the right of you at the intersection. They have the right of way to go. And so if everybody is familiar with the system, there's no accidents. Whereas the dingbat who just flew in from America and got a rental car doesn't know these rules and that's where the accidents happen. So before we get to the next one, I wanted to ask you, have you watched more than one or two of my videos? Do you like them? If you do, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get more notifications when I make new videos. And if you really like a video, pass it along to a friend or a relative who you think would enjoy it too. So in the Czech Republic, there's a sign like this and it means that you are on the priority road. And this can get kind of confusing at some intersections. You just have to be constantly aware that like I'm on the priority road. In the United States, always there would be some sort of signage. There would be a stop sign, there would be a line, there would be something or a yield sign. There would be something indicating at every intersection who has the right of way. On the flip side, if you're on a road and you see this sign, that means you are not on the priority road. And they're probably showing you that before you intersect with the priority road so you know that you need to yield. This only gets confusing for me when streets are intersecting in a way that makes me think, if I'm on the priority road, that in order to curve, I need to put on a blinker. But that might indicate that I'm trying to get off the priority road onto a smaller road. So it's really important that you know what to do at an intersection and what type of road you're on. Stoplights at intersections are super annoying in the Czech Republic for me and most Americans driving. So in the United States, the semaphore, the red, yellow, green, will be either over the middle of the intersection or it will be on the opposite side of the intersection. That means that you can pull right up to the part where you have to stop and you can see very clearly when the light will turn green. Or if you're pulling into an intersection because you are going to make a left and you're waiting for oncoming traffic, even if you're in the intersection waiting, you can still see the traffic signs ahead of you so you can see when it's turning yellow and then when it's turning green and you can safely turn. In the Czech Republic, the lights are actually on your side of the intersection. So what happens is you roll up right to that stop, right to that line where you're allowed to stop, and you can never see the light. I always end up like this, like staring up. And if you just happen to roll a little bit past, which I know you're not supposed to, then you can't even see the light. You can't even tell when it turns green for you. I just don't understand why they don't put it on the other side of the street. Just, you don't need another one. Just put that one on the other side of the street. One thing I love about check uh, semaphores or traffic lights as we call them in the, in the States. So a normal traffic light, what will happen is that it will be green and then yellow, you need to slow down, and then red, you need to be stopped at that point. And that yellow gives you the time to make a decision. Do I go through, do I stop? Um, in the Czech Republic, it also works in the reverse. So when you're sitting and you're waiting to go, um, the light doesn't just flip from red to green like that, it goes to yellow and then to green. And I think it's because more of the cars have a manual transmission that take a little bit of like preparation before you can just step on the gas 
and go through. But that's something we just don't have in California. Another big difference with the intersections, intersections are really dangerous if you're not from here. At the intersections in California, you are allowed to make a right turn, right, right, right turn on red. You still have to yield to traffic that might be crossing in front of you, but it's very common to do this kind of like roll into the stop, into the intersection and just kind of like roll through the turn. But in Czech Republic, it's not okay. Sometimes in Czechia, there won't be an intersection at all. There'll be a roundabout. Now these are really common in European countries, but they are not common in the United States. It's kind of like when you're waiting to get on a chairlift when you first learn how to ski, you realize that that thing's not stopping and you just have to go and jump on and, and go with the flow. And it's really easy when you get used to it and it's actually really safe and it keeps traffic flowing a lot better, but it's just very awkward for an American, especially when there's more than one lane in the, in the roundabout. Like there's a roundabout at Davitska and I think there might be maybe only two, but it seems like there are three lanes and it's really intense and there's a tram track that goes right down the middle. And it's like, so not only are you worried about jumping in and going the right speed and not getting hit, you have to watch out for a tram that literally cuts down the middle. So the key thing for Americans to remember about roundabouts is that you don't need to signal when you go into one, but you do need to signal when you go out of one. That way the, the driver in the next sort of uh, branch or spoke can see that they're free to go because you're getting off. But that's essential using your blinker. Another rule for the Czech highways is that there's no passing on the right. So there's generally two lanes and you drive in the right lane and you pass in the left lane. So that's the secondary part of the rule is that you don't just hang out in the left lane. So in California, I mean, first of all, in Los Angeles, there's going to be like four lanes and people are just whizzing past you in all directions, usually some idiot in like a yellow Lamborghini that's trying to show off. But they're just going in and out and around cars, and that's actually really dangerous when you think about it, but we're just kind of used to it that you can pass like in any lane, and you can just like hang out in the, in the, in the fast lane. Now this is something that bugs me so much about Czech drivers. This is the one thing I can't stand, is that it's just what everybody does, but if you're in the fast lane and you're not going fast enough, they will come up so close to you, they will tailgate you and they will flash their lights. And this is, I think this is just what you're supposed to do, but it freaks me out that they get so close. And I don't hang out in the, in the fast lane, but if sometimes, I don't have a very fast car, so sometimes I will be passing another car to get past them and what was just like a little blip back there of one car will just be racing up and be on my tail before I even got the speed to go around this car. The speed limit in California is 65 miles per hour, which everybody breaks, um, and the speed limit in Czech Republic is 80 miles per hour. It's 130 kilometers per hour. I feel like that's actually a little bit safer because in California you actually have to break the law, you have to speed in order to just keep up with the flow of traffic. One thing I found really cute when you're driving, you know, out in the countryside is you will come across a sign and it will be the town and it'll be like Lidice and you're going through and then like 20 seconds later you're on the same road and you see a sign and it says Lidice with a like a cross through it. And I always thought it was kind of cute, like, here we are, little town, hi Lidice, bye Lidice. And I just thought it was kind of like a quirk, like didn't, didn't see the purpose of that before I got my driver's license. In the municipality of Lidice, so you have to know where it starts and where it stops, the speed is 50 kilometers per hour. And when you leave the town, then you can resume to 90 kilometers per hour. So in California, they would definitely have a um, a sign with the speed limit on it, but in the Czech Republic you're supposed to know those numbers and you're supposed to know that like when I'm in this municipality I cannot go over 50 kilometers per hour. In the United States you go to a gas station and generally what you'll do is you'll put your credit card in the machine and then um, you can pump gas and it will just go until it's filled and then it will automatically deduct that from your credit card. So you actually never have to go into the the um, shop if you don't want to. But in Czechia and in most European countries where I've been, you actually pump your gas without paying and then when you're finished you go in 
and you tell them what number you're on. So the basic difference is that it's like the honor system. I feel like in the United States, if people had the ability to pump gas and not pay for it, so many people would just take off. I, I mean, that sounds really bad, but like I really think that that would be the case in America. But here, you, you pump first and then you pay. So those were just some of the driving differences that I noticed when I was driving around town. If you have ever driven in the United States, um, let me know if you had any issues with the drivers, the behaviors, um, what you found to be strange about the situation. Tak uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!